when we need, we really church need a monastery. Why? Because life of monastic, it's a wall of fire around the church. Because mm -hmm. it needs someone to be, so it can pray for the church and for the whole believer and the whole world 24 hours. Mm -hmm. You know, Manhattan, you see in the beginning Church of Days was very success because we have a monastery, we have preacher, our monks reached to China and uh, Tibet and all this Asian area. Shlama and Shlomo, everyone. This is Ninorta coming to you from Arizona. Welcome to episode number 49 of the Assyrian Podcast. When I had recently moved to Phoenix, I heard that there was a monk living here in a monastery. You can imagine my amazement when I found out about this because the last time that there were monks in the Assyrian Church of the East was over 700 years ago. So I started to do some digging. My father was able to arrange a meeting with Brother Ogan this past summer as females are not allowed into the monastery without being accompanied by a male. During this interview, I learned so much more about Brother Ogan's past life as a music producer and DJ, his decision into devoting his life to the monastic life, and his missionary work. Brother Ogan resides in a monastery called the St. Peter's Subcommittee Charity Missionary and Education Center. There, his day-to-day -day is filled with prayers, woodwork projects, meditation, fasting, ministry, refugee assistance, drug addiction support, prison ministry, language classes and history classes, and so much more. Whether you're the church-going type or not, I think you'll truly appreciate the dedication and devotion of Brother Ogan. Before this interview, I had an idea of what a monk might do, but this really gave me the inside scoop. And did you hear? Episode 50 of the Assyrian Podcast is coming out next week, and we really want to hear from you. We'd love for you to leave us a voicemail or a message telling us your name, where you live, which episode was your favorite, and why. We'll be randomly selecting messages to air as a part of the episode. Also, feel free to email us your thoughts and we can read them out loud. Simply dial 415-349-3845 and leave us a message or email us at info at .com. Lastly, support for this podcast comes from Tony Kelagarakos and the Injury Lawyers of Illinois and New York. If you know anyone that's been in a serious accident, please reach out to Tony Kelagarakos. He has been recognized as a top 40 lawyer and a rising star by Super Lawyers Publication and has obtained multiple multi-million dollar awards. Tony can be reached at injuryrights.com or at 847-982-9516. And now, here is Brother Ogan. You are a monk of the Assyrian Church of the East. How long have you been a monk? I've been a monk that have been five years. I was ordained in 2012 by His Grace Marawa Rawal, Episcopal of California, is the Bishop of California. Mm -hmm. I lived there for one year and a half, but before that I practiced monastic life from 2008. And I've been almost 10 years. We are living the monastic life, practicing, living the spiritual life, living with Christ. You know. And before five years ago, you mean studying it, preparing it before mm -hmm. before yeah. being ordained. Yeah, yeah. it was. Well, it's a monastic life. It's a call from God to someone who have love to direct his life, to give his life to Christ, because it's a covenant between that person and Christ. Mm -hmm. What are the the steps of of being a monk? The steps. It's a uh, before become a monk, you have to. Of course, examine yourself because monk's life it's not an easy it's not an easy work you know or life. It's a life of suffering and carrying the cross and denying yourself and giving yourself to Christ every day, every moment, and being ready uh, to serve Him and to bring His glory for His name for whatever you do, if it's a talk or works or any type of act mm -hmm. you do daily yeah mm -hmm. what was your life like before you became a monk before i became a monk i was a music producer uh, music engineering uh, i study music i have so much love for that kind of hobby because music is a language for the soul too and i still 
like use today my talent that I learned to serve the church with. Before we used to serve like a like worldly music, mm-hmm. but today we are we are using it for spiritual and for the glory of God. Mm-hmm. What made you decide to become a monk? To leave your prior life and and choose this life. It's uh, the life of Christ. It's a love of Christ. Uh, he's the one who's gonna de- make anyone follow him, because uh, he's the one who changed my life and bring me to to who I am today, by his grace, by his power and strength and his wisdom. And he's always with me. He's been with me in all path that I walk on. We, he's my advisor. He's everything in my life. That's why I decided to give my life to him, just like he gave his life to us. It's a life of sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And this is the zenith of Christianity. Uh, the zenith of love when you sacrifice to someone. That's mm-hmm. when Christ spoke about it. Yeah. So it's the, li- the love of him. Make us that always. drew you in. Yeah. What are some things that you do on a daily basis? Can you tell us what a typical day looks like for you? Yeah, of course. We have a six-time prayer a day. We have a woodwork. We start our day at 4.30 in the morning. That's the first prayer, which is Mutwit Lilia, we call it. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the morning prayer at 5.30. And then we have another prayer at 12 o'clock. It's a noon prayer. And we have another prayer at 3 o'clock. And the evening prayer starts at 5. And the before sleep prayer we have, uh, that's the last prayer, the 7.45. Between all this time, there is a woodwork, mm-hmm. handwork uh, here I do. There's a lot of study and meditation too in the Word of God and the fathers of the church. And uh, plus, uh, we have, I want to speak detail about what we do here at the St. Peter Subcommittee Charity and Education Center that it was established by His Grace Mara mm-hmm. by the support of Father Kandu Kandu. He's, uh, who, he's the one who come up with the idea and, and he want that place to be established as a retreat center for our young generation. So what we do here exactly is every day, just like we say prayer and then um, daily woodwork we practice discipleship. We practice art of prayer and fasting here. Mm-hmm. Life of repenting every day. Serving those who are needed and help. The, they came from back home like a refugee mm-hmm. and poor people. And those who go through addiction. Our young generation who's going through addiction. Not just drug addiction. There's, uh, you know, addiction, there's a lot of different type of addiction. Mm-hmm. And we help if there's a, like an issues with a family or marriage life or marriage couples, like they have issue in their life, of course, it's part of our uh, walita, our job to to get involved and and help mm-hmm. with the daidahi. So this is what we do here exactly. It's called um, and we call it education center charity because we help poor people mm-hmm. and uh, and. Um, uh, missionary because we preach when we go help refugee just like Muslims and because we help humanity here we don't put difference of course yeah. our people come first Christians but we help humanity too we have a lot of Muslims coming from Syria and Iraq we help them preach to them about Christ bring them to know Christ here uh, mm-hmm. so that's part of our mission education we we teach uh, the Gospel and the Holy Bible, New Testament, Old Testament, the divine liturgy, church history, rules of life of clergy here. We teach discipleship, uh, self-discipling and obedience, commandment of God and the Assyrian Aramaic language too. We teach, we have a class on Tuesday for the clergy who come here to learn the Lishana Atiqa Aramaya, Lishana Khata Aturaya. And we have uh, Deacon Tony, class means from London, he mm-hmm. came here, he, he teaches uh, the grammatika, the grammar of Aramaic language, Assyrian language, to our young generation here. We do that too. It was actually mm-hmm. yesterday one of the class, and plus it's a Bible study, and um, of course we have videos. Uh, we have a channel who we preach in three different languages. It's called The Life from the East. Mm-hmm. 
it preached on Assyrian and English and Arabic Arabic language. People can listen to us and watch our videos uh, through Facebook or through YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. It's called the Life from the East Bahram and Medincha. I purposely name it Bahram and Medincha because Christ spoke about the Bahra is gonna raise from from the Medincha mm -hmm. So the the Bahra start from Medincha from uh, from Mesopotamians and and, and it went all over. Mm -hmm. How much did your faith affect your daily life? Of course, with no faith we cannot live. Faith is the, it's the energy who's going to give you a strength so you can do whatever you're doing. Because whatever we do, we do it by faith. Faith and works is uh, the key of every believer. And uh, in my daily life, it's... Um, Faith and love and hope, the three things has to have, every believer have to have it over and that you will miss. You cannot, you cannot say just, it's, it's just faith. You have, have to, you have to have love mm -hmm. and faith and hope. Yeah. So of course it does affect my daily works and my daily prayer and, and I affect people who's around me by faith because when you're start practicing the life of monastic or your faith, it will affect the people around you too. Mm -hmm. You you will become just like Christ, you have we have we are the light. We have this we are the soul. So of course it will affect people around me and it will affect me daily. It's a new experience with the Lord every day. It's a new mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How did it affect you before you became a monk? Uh, before I become a monk, um, of course my faith it wasn't like the way it is today mm -hmm. because it's a it's a relationship it's like when someone who has a relationship with a person and it's different when you speak to him by the phone or when you meet him and sit down and talk to him mm -hmm. face to face face to face so before that it was only like a outside communication with, with Christ it was just a very simple believer life mm -hmm. but after that it becomes very deep to get to know Christ, to live his suffering, just like St. Paul says, to live, his, to live his steps that that the way he lived on earth, we have to look like him because we are the image of Christ. As soon as we become, and we become Christian and we were called Christian, that's mean the image of Christ has, people has to see it on us over and that we'll be deceiving ourselves and deceiving others. Mm -hmm. yeah. With prayer being the most important part of your day, you mentioned how often you pray with, with certain times. Mm. Can you tell us how do you pray and what, what are the, the prayers? Yeah, the prayer we have as a monastic life has seven prayers. But here we practice six of them, which is, uh, first of all, the Mutwitlilia. It symbolizes when Christ is going to come and raise us from the death. Mm -hmm. The 4.30 in the morning. And we have the Slotat Sapra. It's when the light, when, when Christ it becomes the light of our life. So as soon as when we as soon as we get up from our sleeping, we have to go and pray, start our our life with the word of God and praising God for give us another day so we can live for His glory. The second, uh, the third prayer, it lands to the those are to those clergy who are from Church of Days, they know about it. It's it's a prayer of nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that that prayer it symbolized when the Holy Spirit came down and the disciple and give them the strength up the, uh, the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. That's why they put it because that was it was a nine o'clock when the Holy Spirit came down and and uh, give these disciple a strength and a, a language that they can speak. We have a, a 12 o'clock prayer. It's a, it's a, it's a prayer of when Christ was crucified, the crucifixion hour. So we pray and we glorify the Lord for the salvation He gave us and that He died for us. We have the, the prayer of three o'clock. It's a prayer when Christ He gave His uh, spirit to His fathers and He died on a cross. And we have the evening prayer, the five o'clock prayer, that's when the body of Christ 
Nicodemus and Yusuf Atromta, they took it and they put it in a coffin and they put it in a new tomb. So that's the evening prayer. On that prayer too, we thank the Lord and forgive us a long day and a safe day and and for the salvation and for whoever He give us that day. Yeah. And we have the before sleep prayer. It's um, it, what we call Tishmishta. It's a, a service of the monks. They used to do it before they sleep. In case they sleep, they never get up. So they used to serve their self mm. before they they. Um, Someone else served them. Yes. In case they sleep, they never wake up again. So yes. we call before sleep prayer. Just like when someone's hungry, he goes and eats. Same thing with your soul. So it doesn't. So that prayer protects protects you from evil, evil visions, evil dreams, and gives you a nice sleep. Die the yeah. So it's it's very important. We practice that at 7:45 every day here. Mm-hmm at the St. Peter Subcommittee on mm-hmm. Charity and Education. And people do come and join you for uh, these Of course, yeah, every day we have visitor, every day we have people who come here for a retreat. Um, uh, yeah, we always have our people, even Amerkaya, and they come here, mm-hmm. you know, Mushilman, and they come and not join me for prayer, like Mushilman, they come usually here for, if they need uh, help or they need uh, to hear about Christ, um, uh, so there's a lot of reason why mm-hmm. they come here and how we can help them out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You mentioned some woodworks that you've done, and I've seen the work that you've done with that. How mm-hmm. how did you learn to do woodworking? I like art. Mm-hmm. You know, start from music and all type of art. So before I become a monk, I pray to the Lord so He can give me a gift, so His name will be glorified through it. Mm-hmm. Which is, He give me the woodwork. I went on YouTube and watched doing the wood burning. I learned it mm-hmm. quick. So um, I start practicing that that part of woodwork to do something not earthly but uh, you know spiritually. Mm-hmm. Which is, my main reason was to glorify the name of the Lord on it and bring the art of Church of the East that we lost have in so many years. Mm-hmm. Church of the East uh, did have a lot of artwork, did have icons. Some people think Church of the East never have icon, but actually it's wrong because uh, historical evidence and um, uh, the liturgical books and uh, the manuscript, it shows that Church of the East it did have art and did have icons. The first icon was the icon of Edessa when King Abgaru came out to Raya. He sent his disciples so they can draw the image of Christ, mm-hmm. but they couldn't draw it because the glory was coming from the face of Christ. Just like you see, because of Isaiah I mentioned, he's one of the the first cranium on the first historical book that that we follow. We follow and we try to know the history of the Church of the East and how the Shechayuta were a church. So my main reason was to bring that art that we lost through crosses, through icons. And through the writing of um, the Strangeli, Atika, I have so much love for our artistic writing, especially the old Strangeli. It's so beautiful, and we don't lose that treasure that we have in Church of the East mm-hmm. throughout. Because art is a language, icon. It's a what do we call it. It's a it's a revelation of the di- divine that we don't see mm-hmm. on our earthly materials. So icons, it's a window, we look through it. It's a language. When you put an icon of Christ getting baptized of, or crucifixion of Christ or resurrection of Christ, if a little kid walk by that image and icons, he will understand, he will ask. And, and it's a language to those who are, does he read the Bible? You know, just through seeing that icons, he will know it's the icon will speak to him about what Christ done for him and how how important is he. We don't worship icons, mm-hmm. and Church of the is never worship. We we honor them just like we honor our parents' images and icons and something else. Mm-hmm. We don't we don't have no idols. We don't put idols. We have only icons in Church of the East, mm-hmm. just like the Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, Pilatlo. So Church of the East was the first who has icons. Until today, we have in our manuscript of like old gospel, we see icons of Christ. Mm-hmm. 
and his resurrection, his crucified, his baptism, his or his uh, Oshana when they he came to Jerusalem and they celebrate him. The way they draw it, the way it's draw, it's not like a uh, real image. It's like a cartoon, and they purposely church if they just draw it that way so they don't worship these images. Uh. It's just so that it can give you idea about what we celebrate in today mm -hmm. and what Christ done. Because you know before the gospel it wasn't just like today everyone can go buy a, 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 a holy bible and have them at home before it wasn't like that so that was part of the preaching part mm -hmm. of the language i mean i've seen you at church mostly mm -hmm. and here at the monastery but do you ever leave the monastery to go other places like shopping uh, usually shopping i don't go do shopping uh, my parents do everything mm -hmm. like and friends mm -hmm. they do it for me I leave the monastery if there is a purpose of it. If I'm going to visit like uh, someone who's sick, someone who needs help, of course, a refugee, we go outside, we go be part of the prayer at the church. And of course, we leave the monastery whenever it needs it, mm -hmm. you know, when we have a mission outside to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we, we do. Do you ever miss going to family events like baptisms, weddings? Hmm. Well, it's beautiful, these events, it's beautiful because they gather for love, but it's not part of my life. Mm -hmm. Baptism as a, as a service, which is at the church has been done, that's different. But baptism as a, um, they celebrate it at home, they mm -hmm. make music, no, I don't get involved because mm -hmm. it's not part of my life. I chose a different path, they chose the earthly mm -hmm. life, which is, that's a part of their life. It's not bad, no. Mm -hmm. Because that's their life. They want to live their life like that. But someone who wants to always, uh, it's not being separated from people uh, to think I'm better. But because I'm weak, I don't want to be around um, uh, yeah. things like this. Because it's a distraction from my, um, my thoughts and our spiritual life. Mm -hmm. You know, because what we practice, what we do, it's different from the life they are living. Mm -hmm. that, okay? Yeah. So we have to be an example for them and everything. This past year, I personally went to, to Iraq and Turkey and I mm -hmm. saw the monasteries there and the churches there. Huh. And right now we are doing this interview at, at this monastery, but mm -hmm. it's, it's a home. Huh. What would your dream monastery be and where would it be located? My dream monastery, it's, uh, the real monastery is going to be with Christ, of course. Mm -hmm. but. My prayer and my hope that there's a day go through the Nahar and Mesopotamians as a Shirshat Christianity or Akra of Christianity of East to establish them the monastery there, not in the Ma'arwa here in the mm -hmm. Western, because in the Western monasteries it's not going to be the same the one in the Eastern. The people for in the East they have love for this type of life more in the West. This is how I. You know, mm -hmm. experience it, and so I wish and I pray that, that there's a day it's gonna open a monastery, go atrit menacha North Iraq, and gather our young generation some because I believe if that monastery open go uh, atrit I believe there's a lot of a lot of Orient people will come over because I have contact with so many of them like even from Menencha they they have love mm -hmm. but it's hard for them to come here yeah so monastery mm -hmm. when we need we really church the East need a monastery why because life of monastic it's a wall of fire around the church because mm -hmm. it needs someone to be so it can pray for the church of days and for the whole believer in the whole world 24 hours mm -hmm. you know Manhattan you see in the beginning church of days was very success because we have a monastery we have preacher our monks reached to China and uh, Tibet and all this Asian area the people and the patriarch who who got a very strong like Marbawe Rabba patriarcha from the fifth century who is the one who, who sent the first disciple to China to to establish Christianity there and establish monasteries? And then uh, you have Marti Matayus Qamaya. He's the one who renewed the life of monastic and he starts sending disciples again mm -hmm. all over. 
so khilt ala hoye go atrawat men khayuma yeah udey ra khilat ratna i i still have love to live in back home that's what our fathers belongs mm-hmm. that's where all the saints they were that's where it all started yeah exactly mm-hmm. so it li khubba qa atrad men waladiya i have love for atradian and for our people there too khilt ala i get a chance so i can go visit too yeah but because you know what's going on it's very hard yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and you've you've made this home as a monastery to, your, to the mm-hmm. best of your ability. I mean, there's a beautiful prayer room, you have a, a nice library, so you've yeah. you've done what you can with, with the resources that you have. Yeah, I praise God who will give me a wisdom and strength to establish and make the house to be a, become a, a retreat center for our people. I don't want to be living here by myself. I'm not by myself, it's me and Christ. People will ask me, like, so who lives with you right now? It's like, it's me and Christ. So I'm not by myself. I used to have uh, young uh, people who were here for retreat for like six months to one year, which Kirala. Mm-hmm. They are doing good. And of course, I keep follow up with them. And um, we have guest room here. People, they want to come stay. Uh, we have prayers, of course. We have woodworks. We have a lot of things we can practice. It's mm-hmm. a life of silence here. We don't We don't have no TV here. Most of our work is in the internet. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we can keep it quiet and silence. Yeah. Yeah. Much as we can, you know, but shkirala uh, and everything, yeah, so yeah. far so good. Yeah. And can you can you tell us a little bit of history on the the Assyrian Church of the East and and monks? Yeah, Assyrian Church or Church of the East, the Church of the Sahdi and Ait Sahdi It has a long history with monastic. Why? People they might be surprised to hear things like this. Why? Because monastic life starts in the Church of the East from the first day when Christianity entered the, the Church of the East. Because monastic life, it starts, it's a life of disciple, discipleship. It's a life of prophets. It's a, so to those who carry the word of God from, with love and never, and never worry about or take, take heed about this life or marriage life, why just they carry their word so they can serve so they can bring their glory to the lord so they can bring people to christ so church of the east it has monastic life from the beginning of it i will divide them three different stages because saint anthony established the monastic life in egypt in third century which is a so he can be secluded living secluded monk living his life secluded far away from people in the mountain and then you have some Bakumios who, who established the second monastic life after St. Anthony, which is what we call the life of, of partnership. Uh, all the monks live together in one monastery. That's where we live in today, mm-hmm. where we practice. But the first life before that, and even that, that type of life was all over the Aitati Wileta, which is the all uh, holy apostolic church everywhere they were practicing it's a life who the dis- disciple life disciple life it's pretty much just like saint Ephraim of of uh, of syria lived it or mara from rabbi Qarakhle. he was a deacon and uh, he didn't get married he loved his life with some people with him in the house preaching teaching practicing prayer every day helping poor people so church of base it has that type of love where we call it uh, children of covenant in Bnunit Qiyama and Iqarakhlu and Iqamta Tiawahala, the life of monastic like a Deirayuta where Saint Anthony established it in Egypt. So, Church of Days has that in the beginning of it. After the disciple came for uh, Mesopotamia and Odessa and preached the word of God, those who heard the word of God uh, they fell in love with it. Their love reached till they put their self and give their life to Christ so they can preach the word of God, go everywhere, help, teach, uh, baptize uh, people. So, Church of the East already has this from the beginning of it, so it's not something new. But after uh, Mar Ogin came from Egypt, in the fourth century, brought Deirayuta to Mesopotamia, to Bitmaharan. Mar Ogin Marshal they were the first monks who brought monastic life 
or they can live secluded in a mountain and اختياطات at طور عبدين ونصيون ودير مرقى وريل انا كلها ايوا اتمنى طور ازل where Mar Ogan established his first monastery and all the Qaddish Yitama their Margawri al-Mar Awraham and Kula Iwat Qitat Madankha from the beginning they were all belonged to Church of the East and that's when the monastic star uh, get established after this we have the third stage of that it's uh, the life of partnership of Psalm Bakhomius Ayn Warra when they start establishing monastery I'm telling you what, they used to live in them, in the caves, you know, in a, in a desert. But Harta, they start become more organized to establish monastery and live the law of San Bachomios and, and Baishayewa. Ayyamawi Dali, who, who started, that was Mar Oraham Kashkirayat, Kashkar. Said Abraham of Kashkar, who started this life in the Mesopotamians to all live together, life of partnership, work. It's a prayer together, work, handwork together, and eat and and live together. That's what we call life of partnership. So this uh, and this is still going in uh, some of the Orthodox Church, which is Syriac Orthodox part of the Church of the East, and even Chaldean Church mm -hmm. used to be a part of Church of the East. So they still have their life. We lost it after after the 14th century. After the Tamar Lang on Holak and all this uh, barbarian who come and destroy mm -hmm. Christianity in the Mesopotamian and our Nashidi and Tiratlo Torane, they ran away from all this persecution. We lost all mon all the monastery. We lost the we lost the monastic life. The last monk that we have was he wasn't officially monk, but they used to call him monk. Rabban Yon and Tchumaya Tchume. I have an image of him. He's from the 18th century. Surma Khan Mathura Ela Guktaudia. She mentioned him in her in her book. And she mentioned how he used to live, and how what he used to do daily. Like he used to teach priests and clergy. He used to teach a lot of kids. He lived his life very simple, very simple. Died uh, he practiced the life of prayer, and he was a very good advisor to the Bataryarka too. When they want to ask him something. Because he was uh, very intelligent and, uh, and smart, and Amarakhle Yatana Kanunat Aita, the law of the Church of the East. So, yeah. But I'm never official, but I'm going to say Rabban Yon and Tchumaya from Tchumi. And then um, after that, we start living, we become the first monks, me and Akhun Amanuel, I went to California, I knew my we become the first two monks after pretty much 700 years of Church of the East, never have monks that wow. they have our hand. Well, we praise God for that gift that He gave us. and uh, It's a, it's a really a treasure that we lost before. Yeah. And we try to get it back and work on it and bring people to it. Absolutely. Yeah. And you were born in Iraq, correct? Mm -hmm. Which part of Iraq? I was born in Baghdad in 1981. Um, uh, go to Baghdad because I'm To those who knows where where is who it? knows the area. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was born. In, even my parents they are from from there. Originally they are from Harile. Mm -hmm. We are from the same Ujakh of Marius Khanani, Shokadisha Marius Sarwaye, who have from the same Malta. Yeah. And when did your family come to the States? We came to U.S. in 2000, and uh, we've been here almost 18 years. Uh, and first, we left uh, Iraq in 1996. We went to Jordan. We lived in Jordan for like a year and a half. And then uh, from there to Lebanon, we lived in, in, in Beirut for three years and a half. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in 2000, we entered the U.S. and we become a part of the U.S. Uh, the U.S. Uh, life. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Are there others that want to take this path with you and become monks? The, uh, there's, there's a young generation who tried it and... Uh, they give up on it. Of course, there's. Uh, I have people who I give and take with them, like talk to them about it. 
and you know they still have uh, fear from it because mm-hmm. it's not easy for them it's not easy everything is easy with love because when you have love and you know why you're doing this and you know the the reward behind it they will you will never worry about this life or the boost the pleasure of this life or 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 to be married of course marriage love it's a blessing life we not we not say marriages but there's love above marriage life mm-hmm. comes you know when when someone uh, reach that level so uh, you will start understanding the purpose of christianity is mm-hmm. it's for to live for the second life yeah so we pray to those who are love to come over and uh, and try mm-hmm. this life and see how peaceful and beautiful it is to be servant. It's not the life of a uh, of flower, of course it's not. Yeah, it's not easy. Uh, yeah, it's not easy, but with Christ it will be easy. Mm-hmm. Because uh, we don't depend on our wisdom, our strength, our knowledge um, to live that life. If it's a work of Christ inside of us, just like St. Paul says, it's His grace, His spirit who who uh, lead us to do whatever is right before him mm-hmm. that, uh, yeah yeah what's one final message that you'd like the listeners to take from this interview i will ask everyone to pray for me which is that's very important yeah. and live your faith live as uh, it's been given to you you've been called as a christians so live that live the life of christ and how are you going to live the life of Christ? It's first of all when you start talking to him through prayer and reading the Bible because it's taken and given. It's just like I was talking to someone last time about the importance of, of the person of, uh, who believes in Christ, who has duty to do in his life. It's not just, oh, I'm a Christian, Shkira Allah. Doesn't Umrah ever? I'm gonna go Umrah on Sunday and that's it. It's not. You have things to do. You are a mission. You have mission to do on earth. You have to be the witness of Christ on earth to practice that disciple life. It's not been given only for priests and deacons and monks. It's part of every believer to practice that disciple, mm-hmm. to go visit and preach about Christ and live the word of God. Read the Bible every day. You need to read the Bible because just like you eat every day, Christ say, I'm, I'm a bread of life. Mm-hmm. So that's why you see people falling through depression today and and confusing because their soul is nowhere and their soul is weak. It's just like uh, someone who goes to the gym so he can build his muscles. Same thing, you have to build your spiritual muscle. That's why you need the Bible in your life. You need the life to see how your father and the saint live their life. Why we don't learn from them? That's why we, we have on 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 liturgical prayer to speak about the glory of God on these sin. If God worked through these people, He can work through you too. Most of these people they were sinner, they, they loved the worst life, they repented, they came up, mm-hmm. they came back to Christ to, to be a saint. You know? Why? So they can be with Christ in the second life. The main reason to live with Christ eternally, forever. Which is our life, how long is King David when he speak about this life? Seven years. And most of them, it's works and diseases and marra. pretty much suffering. Yeah. So our life here are limited. Whatever you, you do earthly, it's limited. But when we, you, anything you do for Christ, it stays with you. So the message is, get close to know Christ. Talk to Him and read Him and live with Him. Serve Him. Uh, life, the purpose of life. And I asked so many people to give me a purpose why you are living. What's the main point of living what's the purpose of life so three points it's love and then um, sacrifice and serving this is the main thing three points on life the purpose of life so if you don't have these three in your life just like your lord was 
سبايلي طريقة أو خراب أخمارة والتلميذ أخرابي you have to be like your teacher your master you have to be your like your lord over and that you're deceived لا مرت آه تدي يا أخي نبتخل مشاتن because tomorrow تقد من ماتخ we use that example أو أو example رابخ خلطة يعني قاموا سبب we don't eat and drink so we can die tomorrow no we eat and drink so we can glorify Christ and live this life die and death it's not for us Christian our Christian will move from this life to the second life death is going to be to those who left in their sin to those who didn't believe in Christ die the king so live the word of God in your life glorify God in your act in your talk when you when I want to see uh, a Christian I want to see Christ on him practice Christianity so I hope that message to the Carol Dialdian and if they have questions they can reach us at the at the, the live from this channel or Facebook thank you very much Robin Ogan وخاميلا عيتان ومتنك لموضع لخدي صاق سلامة وخيد لن خيما جو أطرا مدنخا جميلا خيجا خيتا بخيت على تويا خيوما خيتا شو ساق خلبيت مارا نشم شيخة بارا وقنوا عليهم و pray for me last message thank you Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Assyrian Podcast. If you're liking what you're hearing, please subscribe and review us wherever you're listening. You can also help us by spreading the word about the Assyrian Podcast to your family and friends. And don't forget about episode 50. We want to hear from you, so please call us at 415-349-3845 and leave us a message. Or you can email us at info at assyrianpodcast.com with your name, your location, your favorite episode, and why. Thanks so much again, and we'll see you all next week.